tell you, baby. And then in the Simlish, it's translated to Shabanavi Nuvu. Hi, beautiful human. Hi. I'm Zach. That's Dana. We welcome to the studio uh, back again, our friend Tori Kelly. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. You're the best. You're the best. I really, you know, I was telling somebody today, like, our origin story, and yeah. I feel like I fucking bring it up every time we talk. Every, literally every interview. It, I've seen comments that are like, they talk about this every oh, time. We're going to we, move on. Yeah, here we go again. No, but like, I just want to- get it. I, I just want to say, like, this album <laughs> that we're about to dive into is fucking incredible, Thank and you. it is nothing like you've ever put out before, and- yeah. You're at like a really different stage in life, but also the sonics attached to this thing is crazy. And there, there's definitely growth between the last conversation that we had. Yeah. And at that time you were, I mean, you were very close to releasing an album. Well, right? the last time. It was a year ago. Last time was a year ago. I had just one song out from this album. So I just, I think I just had put out Missing You mm-hmm. and I knew I had all these songs on deck, but, but I was like. Did we not talk about Young Gun or was I. No, I don't think we, we did because the EP wasn't even out. Well, okay, that's we, crazy. This is what happened. This is what happened. We were supposed we had an yes. interview scheduled, and yeah. then you got sick. I know you were supposed to come in the next scare. day. Lit- literally, I've been looking forward to this just so you guys know for so long because I was devastated when I was like, like I had this health scare, super scary. Like ended up, sorry about, ended up. Um, collapsing like randomly and had like shortness of breath and everything I was in the hospital and the first thing I said like everyone was super worried and stuff and the first thing I was like wait I have to get out of here like I have an interview with Zach Lang <laughs> tomorrow like what why am I here and everyone was like okay yeah like we'll see and and you know sure enough I had to you know get ad- admitted of course and I was there for like a couple of days but I was so sad because my EP was, you know, set to come out. That's it. That same week, a few days later. And then, yeah, this, I was, I was so bummed that we had to cancel. But when they rescheduled it for, for now, it's like, oh, that's perfect. We have, now we can just talk about the whole album instead of just well, the EP. Did you have two parts ready to go that made up an album before? Or did you end up writing the rest of this album after being in the hospital? So a little bit of both really the whole project was always meant to be a whole project. Like it was always John Bellion and I got in the studio and it was always like, okay, this is our vision. These are all the songs. And then myself and the team, we kind of decided to do like a part one EP just to sort of like get people kind of used to the sound. Cause I knew it was a little bit of a departure. And so instead of just like throwing all the songs out there at once, we're like, maybe we kind of, you know, give a little taste test and, um, so we, you know, broke it up that way and now, well, after I had the, the health scare, I actually did end up adding, um, like two new songs to uh, it. And one yeah. of those songs, is it High Water, right? Yeah, High Water. Oh, so good. Phenomenal. Thank you. Phenomenal. Thank you. Dude, the range on this album is really, really, really superb. Thank you. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. You give, you give everybody everything. Thanks. That's Very fed. All of, all of me, every side. <laughs> it's. Where do we begin on this song? I know. It is so good. Thank you. Where are you at? I mean, physically is the first question, and then mm-hmm. mentally is the second, and the two are obviously connected. Yeah, like now or when I wrote. When you're song? writing this record. <laughs> um, when I was writing High Water, so like I said, I had the, the health scare, um, that was back in late July. And, you know, had the EP come out and everything. And I was I was sad because I had all these things planned, including, you know, this show, of course. But I had, you know, all this stuff planned. I didn't get to promote it like I wanted to, but I did get to go on tour. And I was, it was weird because I didn't feel like I fully processed what had happened. I was just, you know, everyone was like asking me, like, are you okay? Are you okay? How are you? And I, I really did feel like I, I recovered fast. Like it was a scary weird thing that happened and then I was like okay well I feel fine now and the doctors are saying I'm fine so like let's go on tour woo like <laughs> and everyone was kind of like um okay like that was a lot but I think after the tour when things kind of settled again um I realized like wait this I don't think this album is done like I thought that it that it was I thought I had all the sounds and everything that I wanted and I just realized like you know what I I think I need a song that would essentially be like like what's the song that I would have wanted to sing during that hard time 
and um, something to kind of like pull me out of this funk that I'm in. Um, you know, therapy was great, just like getting to talk through it and, and process all of it because it was very strange, especially, you know, <clears throat> kind of it, it being like such a big story, I guess, and, you know, being like in the public eye because it was already traumatic and weird and scary just on its own like with just me and my family and the people close to me but then when the news broke out I was like whoa this is wild like that that had never happened to me before that that kind of headline I guess um how does that really feel does it make you feel that people care yeah I got I got a lot of it was an overwhelming amount of like support and love and just like prayers and like we we, my family and I we could feel it like through the internet it was just like wow so many people are just really caring and um yeah I just got like flooded with messages so it was it was awesome it was just really overwhelming um just in in the midst of everything so all that being said I think getting into the studio again and realizing you know I think we need to add at least one more song that's really what the inspiration for High Water was. It was like, what would I have wanted to hear during that hard mm. time um, to sort of like lift me out of that? And then, then the song, as I'm as I was writing it, it sort of turned into, okay, I don't, I don't really want this song to just be about me and my story. Like, how can I make this feel um, like I, I want to give hope to other people too, and in, in what they're going through. And maybe they can hear this song. It can encourage them, you know, in, in whatever they're going through in life. So that those were the two sort of like inspos for um, for High Water. When you're writing that, do you write that through a lens of like the next time something hard happens, I can listen to this record? Um, or do you like write it through? A, I mean, you're writing it through a lens of like this is what you wish you had. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much like my future self for, for this song, at least in particular. I think it was more. Um, yeah. What what would I have wanted to hear or even just in that present moment like what do I feel like I need to hear right now um and also like just what like there's no other songs like that on the album so it felt really good to kind of like fill in that slot and then once once I wrote it I was like oh now like now this is me like I was missing that sort of um that like puzzle piece on the album beautiful song thank you really good (laughs) Do you want to talk about it? What are you thinking? What's, <laughs> your, Nothing, what's no. your deal? I'm here? just, I'm listening. <laughs> are you? Yeah. So quiet. What are you, yeah, what are you up to? <laughs> I'm just, what do you mean what am yeah, I up to? but you're emitting an energy that like, I don't oh. think I like. I don't know. <laughs> I man. wasn't getting that bad. I don't know what he was talking about. Thank you. Oh, like, yeah, I'm closer to it physically, me. you know? You're like on the other side of the room. You have space. You I'm, guys spend yeah. too much time together, I think. Oh, like, like every day for the past yeah. 15, 12 years. Wow. Yeah, well, we've limited time, honestly. Mm. Now we do. Yeah, it's great. He goes that way, I go this way, we <laughs> so meet up and do this. It's a good thing. And then you miss each other, and it's like, Well, it's a stretch. I don't think I've ever missed I don't think I've ever missed Missed wow. Zach. Wow. I don't think I've ever like longed for his com- like, like companionship. I've never like, like been outside of this room being like, oh, what's Zach up to today? Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> but not in a bad way. It's just when you see someone five days a week, what, you yeah, don't care yeah, about yeah. the sixth them. and seventh day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm fine. <laughs> you know what I did think about High Water when I listened to it and I uh-huh. hope it was a compliment? It's like your version of like Unwritten by Natasha Benningfield. Oh my gosh, it's the best compliment yes. ever. Yes. I love that song. Wow. That's great. Dude, yeah. th- there's like a choir or gang vocals on that. Yeah. Who is it? Um, I mean, so I, I, I always love real singers. Like I have to preface this by saying that first because <laughs> the choir is literally just me. It's like AI. That's why in the li- in the live video, it's seven of you singing the song. That, oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Too. Yeah, it's crazy. Like technology is wild, you guys. Because we honestly what it was is we just didn't have time like we were trying to make these deadlines and you know because you have to like turn in the album Mm. and get all the artwork and everything together. So we had this deadline and I was kind of like wait I want to add one more song kind of thing and it's funny it's you know end up being like a single but I yeah we just didn't have time to like get a whole choir and record them. So I would have had that but uh, it was me and um, one of the producers that worked on the whole entire project his name's Ten Rock, so talented, and he was like, "No, I think we're fine if it's like he's saying a little bit too." So it's just the two of us, and then he ran it through this like AI thing, <laughs> and we're just like a choir. It's so weird. It still it still blows my mind. Wow. Yeah. That's that's crazy. I know. Wait, so did you go in and sing the song in different tones, or did they really just take one? It, w- that's the thing is 
it was just one vocal. Like I just sang it once and then they like were able to make a choir out of it. I know. Wow. I know. Because that's how I would have used to do it is just record like a whole stack. Like that's like what Jacob Collier does. And yeah, where he just like stacks a million voices. But we didn't do that. Your work <laughs> with Jacob has been really superb. Yeah. Like that segue there. I didn't but, mean to do that. No. It's, um, it's just like I'm not, I, I mean, I just. I really did think of stuff. him and I was like, oh, yeah. I love him. He's really a gift. Oh, my goodness. He, his, his talent is just unreal. I mean, yeah, it go, goes without saying. But he, as a person, he's so, like, generous and kind and just, he's such a champion, I think, for other artists. Like, he's not, he, he loves just collaboration and, like, bringing people together. And I just, yeah, I can't say enough good things about him. What, what is it like in that room when you're with him? Like working together? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen video of it, kind of. Yeah, yeah. He did. He posted a video of us, of us singing, uh, working on "Bridge Over Troubled Water," which was uh, kind of insane because the story behind that is he he was also he was working on finishing his album, and he was like up against all these crazy deadlines too. And he does like everything himself. Like he's like you know engineering it, and like he's just like a mastermind. So. He hit me up and he's like, hey, I'm going to be in town, like in L.A. for like, I think he had like two days that he was going to be here. Like, would you be down to hop on this song? Like, I'm doing a version of Bridge Over Troubled Water. I think you would be amazing on the last verse. And I, you know, I'm looking at my calendar. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm I don't know when I'm going to be able to do this. And I was thinking it wouldn't have worked out. But we figured out that there's a block of it was literally like one hour that I could make it work and I have a studio at my house so I was like you could just come over um and I have this one hour before I have to get in the car and drive down to Anaheim which is like an hour away <laughs> to play this is like this day was so insane because I was leaving my house to go sing with this band called Lawrence who's well, amazing course. they actually also worked on my album <laughs> um really they're, they're signed with John, John Bellion. Bellion yeah so it's crazy <laughs> like Network of people, so I I drove down because they were they were opening for the Jonas Brothers, <laughs> who I've also known for a really long time. So I'm like, this is the craziest day ever. I'm just seeing like all these amazing people, and so we had this one hour. I was like, Jacob, we have to be quick. Like I I don't know, I have to make it down there for sound check. And uh, so he came over, and he's like, it's fine, it's fine, we'll be fast. And I I knew he was quick, but we. Like, when I tell you, like, I blacked out. Like, I don't remember. When I saw that video, I'm like, I literally don't remember doing any of that. <laughs> like, we were just, we were on this this other planet. I felt like the things that he was having me do, like, and, and seeing, uh, the notes were just, they didn't exist. And I'm like, what are you <laughs> having me do right now? And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he actually posted, like, a longer, it was like an eight-minute version somewhere on, on YouTube. And it's just, it's just trippy because... He he's just so good. Like, and I think working with him, we both uh, we, we're just I think we're just similar in, in what we hear. So he would, you know, throw this run out at me, this riff, and then I would kind of like mess with it and make it my own. And yeah, we just kind of took it section by section. And then at the end of it, I was like, OK, bye. I have to go. And then he sent it to me. I was like, when did we do this? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> and did you get it done in less than an hour? Oh yeah, no, yeah. It was, it was like, it was definitely less than an hour. Yeah, he has, he has the whole, you know, he recorded the whole thing, and I was like, how long was that actually? He was like, yeah, it was, it was like just under an hour, which I, I've like never done before. That's sick. So he, he's amazing. I, I, I love that guy. What, what, a, like, what a bright light in music. But you as well. Uh, you guys, um, that song is fucking amazing. But Thank also you. Lawrence and John Bellion. So good on this album. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That yeah. they're really two incredibly gifted individuals, mm -hmm. right? It's the guy and the girl. Yeah, it's, the, well, it's there's the a guy, whole bunch right? of them. Yeah, they're so the brother and sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Clyde and Gracie, who are just like amazing people. They're so talented. Gracie's voice is like insane. Um, and so it was, it was mainly actually the ones who were really working on the album were um, Clyde and Jordan, who is one of the horn players. And uh, he's a saxophone player. And, yeah, but the band is, like, I think there's, like, nine or ten of them. Holy a shit. Lot. Yeah. But they're just, they're great. And they they just, like, 
They love being on the road. Their so their show is so fun. Like highly recommend anyone listening to go watch them live. Hello, beautiful human. Every year, millions of gamers experience IGSS, inadequate gaming setup syndrome. Luckily, a cure has been found. You have to go beyond with the Vibersonic mattress by Beyond Sleep. This thing has six built-in subwoofers, USB ports for charging, LED lights so you never stub your toe. It gives you an acoustic massage when you want it, plus adjustable degrees of comfort. This right here is the best way to game ever. Hear your IGSS today at beyondsleeptech.com. Can we dive into Purple Skies? Yeah. What does that really mean to you? Purple skies, like as a phrase, or like I mean, as the like tour a theme name. to the entire thing, <laughs> as an interlude. Yeah, the interlude. Yeah, what yeah, does yeah. that mean against Tori being the self-title of the album? I mean, let's dissect. Yeah, let's dissect it. So, yeah, purple skies sort of it accidentally became a theme of the album. Uh, we, John and I, had written a bunch of the songs, and. At some some point along the way, I was listening through and I was like, do you realize we say Purple Skies in like two of the songs? Like we didn't even do it on purpose. Missing You, we said, was Rain in Purple Skies. And then I think Alive If I Die, um, underneath we say Underneath a Purple Sky. I was like, that's weird. Like why, why did we say that twice? And I was like, I kind of like it. It feels, it kind of feel, felt like the aesthetic of the album. I don't know what it is about purple. I only have... I'm I'm just really into purple lately. It reminds me of the early 2000s. I just think purple was like <laughs> everywhere for some reason, and um, so that that was one element that I liked how it kind of tied in. And yeah, I just kept seeing purple everywhere, and so I I decided to name that interlude "Purple Skies" interlude. It just felt like dreamy, and um, I just liked the visuals that it gave me while while listening to the album. So. Yeah, and then now, now the tour is called Purple Skies Tour. So. I wonder where we came, like, really was stemming from. You know, what's that? Like, it, w- like, like, where did that? Uh, yeah, where the subconscious <laughs> it came out and you saw? I don't know. I know? think I, I honestly feel like this is the first album where I've been so much more visual with it. Like, I've before I think I would just get so caught up in like every sonic detail, and which I still definitely am. But now I've. I, th- I feel like I've built on that where I'm, I'm still this perfectionist when it comes to the music, but now I have the capacity to get more creative with like the overall like presentation of it, I guess, and just the aesthetic and even like, okay, what's like the fashion around this album? What are, what are the visuals? Like what are the music videos? You dance. I mean, yeah, that part, like. That's huge. <laughs> Don't let's, let's not gloss over movement like that. Yeah, it's fun. I, I wanted songs that would make me want to move again. I, I grew up dancing um, as a kid. I took, like, dance class and stuff. And then I was always singing, though, throughout that. And, the, you know, the singing thing kind of took over. And <laughs> someone threw a guitar in my hand, and it was, that was it. But I I really love. Yeah, I just I just love to dance and I think this album feels like such a it just covers all the bases for me because there is still that girl with her guitar sound mm. on there like on songs like Oceans and um so even good. Diamonds like you'll hear just a lot of that like acoustic kind of um texture. Were in you the writing album. any of those these songs that way or Actually no. And I it's funny people think I write on guitar I, I often will learn the song after on guitar. I find, this is just me, I find that writing songs on the guitar can kind of limit myself. Um, I don't know what it is. Like, I, maybe it's just the style that I play in. Like, I don't want to get too locked into, you know, I have, like, a specific way that I play. So I kind of like when I can just be free of that and we can play around with just, like, other sounds. Maybe we write a song fully on bass or we start with the drum pattern and then what I'll do is I I end up kind of like covering my own songs. It feels like I'm doing like a remix of it. Interesting. Yeah. But I, I, I don't often it's very rare that I'll that I'll I'll feel like it should start on guitar for me. Can we talk about cut? Yeah. You don't want to cut if it's not wor- uh, if it's not with me. Yeah. Not with me. <laughs> you ain't yeah, get, keep going. <laughs> you ain't get this love from somebody else. <laughs> I'm the only one you know. Yeah. You take control. Yeah. I know you know. I know you know. <laughs> it was good. 
That was great. I was looking for your approval. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Good record. Thanks. This one's this is a fun one. Did you see? Are you writing? Like, are you talking to somebody? <laughs> this song, this song was, I think, more about the overall like confident feeling of. I mean, I think in every like all of my love songs, if there's any hint of me singing about love, I'm obviously thinking about my husband. Like, Duh. of course, because like we love him, big fan. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that element of like, oh, let me let me go back to like when we first met and maybe what I what I like could have said or could have been thinking or feeling. Um, so there's that element to it. But I think with with a song like Cut, it was a lot of just me channeling this like new confidence of like, yeah, I'm I'm the only one for you. Like you don't want to fall in love with mm. with nobody else but me. So it's a little bit of like a flex song that that side of me kind of kind of peaked out. Um, but the the. I think the main thing I love about this song is it it does have that like UK garage kind of yeah. thing. Um but it's also mixed it's like a hybrid. It has that vibe but then it also has that um you know like early 2000s R&B like Timbaland, Dark Childs. This sound. whole album gives nostalgic mm-hmm. R&B pop. Yeah. It's great. Correct. <laughs> it's been missing. Thank you. And you bring one of the most incredible human beings in the K pop K pop community into it. Yes. Dude. I yeah. love Kim from La Seraphim. She's the best. She's incredible. Yeah. And that song is a hit. You like it? No, no, strap in. No, yeah. that shit's a hit. <laughs> but it's so you, good. Haven't you been teasing something about this since twenty twenty two? So yeah, so there was I didn't officially tease it myself. We kind of like leaked it out for two seconds. Um and yeah, there was a little clip of it going around in in 2022 people were connecting it like when i finally did claim the sound or whatever on tiktok they were like wait this this has been on there for a second but um yeah it's it's a fun one that i i've always that's a that's a good example of with this album is like i feel like i was really stretching myself but it didn't even feel i don't even want to say like stepping out of my comfort zone because these are these are all songs that i've always wanted to have like I just didn't it just didn't make sense in that time so this is spruce is such a good example of like I've always wanted to have just like a fun getting ready with my girls type of song you know like we're going out we're gonna go dance we're gonna look cute like I just think there's something so fun and and sweet about um yeah just like a little like girly pop anthem (laughs) what was it like working with her so we John and I had this song and this was this was one of the later ones that we that we were working on and we always said this would be so cool to get somebody in the K-pop space because i i've like loved K-pop for quite a while now and i was getting tagged so much on on like twitter and stuff of all these different K-pop stars like doing like covering my songs and i was like what i didn't even know they knew like how do how do they know who i am and you know, I, I've uh, I've seen like um, Rose from Blackpink. Uh, she's great. Covers. She's so dope. Um, Jungkook even. Um, He's amazing. Covered my song like back in the day. He did Paper Hearts. So there's always been this kind of this link. You know, I think between me and and just like K-pop. I just I've just always um, loved it and I thought it would be so cool to to collab with somebody. And so I've I have been kind of keeping an eye on La Seraphim and I've been a fan of theirs and so I was like do you think Jaywon would be down like if we just sent it and so and I love her voice I think she's so cool and we sent it over and she was down and she she sent it back and I was like it's literally perfect like no notes <laughs> so um yeah she killed it and she just took the song like I always pictured some kind of feature on it but she like took it to a whole nother level and um i'm looking forward to actually meeting in yeah person. i was wondering yeah i know i i just yeah that's gonna be really cool i want to i want to meet her really bad i really think fun. you guys have a hit on your hands mm-hmm. it's really good yeah no, it's really good thanks <laughs> it's so good what's it about spruce Get ready? um yeah it's so <laughs> the song kind of explains like what spruce is it's just like 
We basically made the word spruce into like a noun instead of like saying like, oh, like, oh, let me go like spruce up or let me go, you know, mm. like, like sprucing up. Um, yeah, we just kind of took that and we were just like, yeah, this whole song feels like spruce. <laughs> Spruce. Yeah, spruce. No, I'm an idiot. I we're just, just gonna. No, I, you're not an idiot. We're we're making it a thing. No, I thought it was know? a tree. So it is technically a tree. I, I did Google it and I was like, yeah, this is also a tree. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but you've heard that phrase. And you're like, oh, let me go yeah, like spruce, spruce up yeah, real no, quick. Totally. Yeah. No, I completely so get it. That's like the energy of it. And um, yeah, we're just gonna make we're gonna make spruce a thing. It's a new phrase. I'm here for Stop it. Stop trying to make spruce happen. <laughs> it has, gonna say it to me. No, it hasn't even started yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're. We're planting those seeds. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Full, circle. Full circle. That's good. Wow. Another feature on the album, uh, an Afrobeat superstar, eh? Yeah. Unbelievable Love. is a great song. Thank you. How does that come together? And by the way, the production is crazy. Oh, man. I, I think that you can, can be tell, a hit I'm too. getting like giddy every song we're talking about. I'm it's like, so ah! good. You should be really proud. I really am. I really am. Um, I, was, I was telling... Uh, my just like a side note before we talk about unbelievable. I was telling my therapist the other day. We love therapy. Um, I was telling her that this album feels like uh, almost like a gift to my younger self. Like I mentioned, like I danced as a kid, and I kind of had this vision of like what you know what I would be like as an artist. And I'm so grateful for my whole career and all the twists and turns and different genres that I've done but this album really does feel even everything down to like the Y2K aesthetic like I was literally growing up in that era and it kind of feels like a gift like to my younger self like this is the album that um that she wanted and it's kind of like I'm giving her her dream in a way so that was just just a little side note that how special is that it's super special it really is um yeah, and I'm I'm super proud of it. But but you didn't ask me about that. You asked me about <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. But, but what a beautiful place to be in your life, like to be in the position yeah. to give yourself that gift through yeah. art. Yeah, and it's it's like it really feels like healing that inner child. I feel like we all probably at one point or another go through that totally. that phase, right? Of kind of I feel like I'm having this conversation like with my with my younger self. Um, yeah, and it, it does feel really special. That's amazing. Do you feel like you had to put out the other style of music to even get here, though? Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's why I say, like, I don't even regret anything. Like, all when I just look back at my career so far, because um, it, it does feel like I'm, I still have so much more that I want to do. But, yeah, looking back, it's like I, I would have never been able to make this album mm-hmm. any sooner than now. Um, I think I, I had to prove to myself a few different things. Um and you know now arriving in this place of like okay like i've done i've done a lot now and i'm really grateful for all the things i've done but now like now let's have some fun let's just <laughs> that rhymes <laughs> <laughs> i hate when i do that um yeah now let's just like have fun let's like loosen up of it and just you know try new things or or things that you've always wanted to try and just haven't yet um kind of like unlock you know, these these other sides of you. By the way, you can listen to Tori's album. It's all waiting for you on Amazon Music. There's a link below. Maybe we'll even throw like a code or something on the screen to scan. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Tori, though, is the name of the album. Yes. Self-titled, obviously. That's your name. Uh, is that your water jug? Yeah, it's huge. I know. Yeah, that is <laughs> it's a real it's contraption. Like a su- it's a suitcase <laughs> of water. <laughs> <What the> <laughs> It even it has my phone in it. What? I know. And wait, I feel like I'm doing an ad. Like, I'm not sponsored by Yeah, this they company. should pay you. <laughs> Send me all the water bottles, please. No, I, I have, my whole team makes fun of me. Like, it's an it's my emotional support water bottle. Like, you'll see this on tour. Like, it's a whole thing. It has a strap. Because then if course. I don't have it, like, I just won't, I won't drink water, you know? And then I'm always losing my phone. So I just keep my phone in there, too. I like that. Thank you. It's an accessory. I need to make like a custom one now. Should make it merch or something. That's a good idea. Yeah. You can mm. do tumblers. Mm, yeah. A Tory tumbler. A Tory tumbler. Mm. You heard it here first. Y'all. Wait, unbelievable. Let's get back to yeah, that yeah. song. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Let's let's actually get back to the to the good stuff. Um How do you get yeah. there from a production sense? And is John on that one as well? 
I mean, he, yeah, he worked He's on the whole, he did the whole album. Yeah, we did, we did everything. So, uh, Unbelievable was, uh, a song that he, he actually had kind of in his back pocket. It wasn't like fully done, but he had this like little demos idea. Um, and he played it for me. I was like, wait, like I'm, I was, and still, I still am very into just Afrobeats, like through, uh, throughout the pandemic, like when we were in lockdown, I got, my husband and I were just obsessed with Fireboy, like. We would just have his albums on loop. And so, uh, yeah, so he played me the song. And I was like, wait, this would be really cool. Like, how how can we make this fit what we're already doing and make it make sense? And Because I didn't want, I, I never want anything to feel forced. But um, it just, yeah, it, it felt really good to just, like, play around with different tones and kind of, like, lay into the, into the track and just, like, settle into it and... Cause that song's like all about rhythm. Like you have to really find the pocket. So um, that was a fun one, and that was another one similar to Spruce, where we just from the jump we were like, oh, we like we're gonna definitely want to feature on this. This just feels like it'd be perfect. And so, um, uh, and yeah, and again, similar to Spruce, I guess I had been a fan of Ira Star, and it was just like, let's just see, like let's just ask and see if she's down and. The cool thing about this song, though, is she was, I think she was going to be in New York. I, we were both, we both happened to be in New York at the same time. So I was working, because that's also where John, uh, where John is. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. Like, I'll fly out. I'll meet you at the studio. And so I actually got, like, my parts were all done, but I actually got to be there when she was uh, recording her oh, verse. Cool. And we kind of like, she, I mean... I don't even want to say like we worked on it together because she literally just went in there and it just like it was just like perfect like she it all just came out of her, um, and uh, and I I just wanted her to like do her thing on it and yeah I love how it turned out she's so sweet too like she's so fun we she even ordered us like Nigerian food in the studio it was like yeah she was she's amazing really great record yeah I listened to it we had we have this crazy listening room here mm-hmm. at the Amazon Music Campus and oh. it sounds insane. Really? Yeah. I want to go in there. Oh, uh, uh, you can. And listen to it right after this. Did you did you listen to thing you do in there? <gasps> Cuz the production's crazy on that song. Yeah, that's I think that's No, I didn't. I listened to it on my headphones. Oh, sorry. We can listen to it though together. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, we can. That's pretty <laughs> sick. It's the Dolby Atmos room. Did we? Did I pass it on the way? It's in um here? no, like that's saw... another room. Oh okay. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a cool listening room, but not as good as the other listening room. Oh wow. Yeah. That's cool. You guys have listening rooms here. Yeah, Amazon Music. That makes cool. sense. Cool. Yeah. Right. All we do is really listen to <laughs> fucking music. To be honest. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do here? Uh, listen to music, share music, talk, talk about, about music. music. Yeah. A lot of music. <laughs> <laughs> what do you you want to talk about music? I want to talk about thing you do. Like I just yes. the, the production's crazy. There's like so much switching up going on in there. Yeah. Um, thing you do is I think my favorite on the album. Why? It feels weird to say that, but I just keep going back to it. Like we so when when we were working on thing you do, I knew from the jump like this ha- this has to open the record. Like this has to be the first song. Because we have that acapella moment in the beginning. I think the reason I like this song so much is it checks so many boxes for of what I love, who I am. Like it it gives me the it gives me catchy chorus, but still giving like live instrumentation, still giving that like sample kind of vibe. Mm. So it's very like we were very drawn to like nineties hip hop for this song. Um, it has like the interpolation of Tom's Diner in there. Like, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, I get to kind of do runs and sing, do my thing, like towards the end. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just like it crosses off so much for me, and it's it makes me want to dance, but it also makes me want to like play every instrument. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, it's big, it's fun. Yeah, I, I just I love the reaction too. Like when I play when I was playing the album for friends and stuff, like that was the first one, and they were just like. That's just the first song, like what in the world? <laughs> um, and then the whole outro, you know, that feels like a whole movie in itself. Um, and I think the the thing about the song too is right away, I just I could picture the live show. Like I just knew I was like, oh, this is gonna translate really well. Um, 
at a show or like at a festival even or something. You could just I could picture it at like every every type of venue, every size of venue. So yeah, it's my spiel. What did you learn about yourself from finishing this album? I learned I learned that I can <laughs> do what I want <laughs> and be <laughs> and I can yeah, if I really believe in something, I don't have to second guess it. I can just kind of take that and run with it and and see where it takes me because that that is what I did on this album and it felt really good because like I said, I, I've said this before, but it really did feel like like okay, you you know you you may think that you know you know my sound or my brand or my aesthetic whatever, but like this album feels like it's me saying like you you actually don't like there's all these other sides that I haven't even shared yet. I'm sure there's still more as I as I get older um, that will emerge. <laughs> but I think just this season I'm in, I learned that that there's really no rules and I can I used to think like <clears throat> excuse me, I used to think that not sticking in one lane was a bad thing or me liking all these different genres was a bad thing cuz I just I just always loved to sing. Like I know I know that for a fact. I know I love singing and I love singing all these different styles and growing up I I really thought it was a bad thing like oh people aren't going to understand me like I'm going to have to pick a genre and stay there. And and a lot of artists do that and that's great and and it works. And maybe maybe that is something that I, you know, need to do or if I would have done that I would have had a different career, but whatever. There's no way that I would be happy doing that. I think I'm just the type of artist that whatever phase I'm in, like whatever, whatever's going on in my life, I'm going to put all of that into the sounds that make sense for where I'm at in life. So um, this is a long way of answering your question, but I think, yeah, overall, it just feels like I, yeah, I get, I get to play. I get to do what I want. Like, I think I've, I've proven enough to myself now to where I can be like, okay, let's just, let's have fun. Like you don't have to, it doesn't have to all be like so serious all the time. Like just get out there and do your thing. You know, like it goes back to me kind of giving that album to the, to my younger self. It's me saying like, here, here girl, like go do your thing, (laughs) like have fun with it. Um, Yeah. So I think that's what I've learned from this, but I did forget to say something about the album that, um, that I, I just feel like is really special and sets this album apart for me personally is because when I started working on it, I had just left my my previous record label, Capitol Records, and... I forgot that you went through that shift. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's nothing at all bad to say about them. It was literally just, like, timing. Like, it was just kind of time to part ways, um, I'd been there for a really long time, so it just felt right going into this new season of my career. And so um, I had left Capitol, and I was, you know, I didn't have a label, and then I started working with John on this music. And I just feel like because we were able to work, like, just the two of us, and, of course, like, the the other guys that had worked on the album as well, but it was, it really felt like it was just me and my vision and no extra like pressures or opinions because that can happen a lot you know at a label like a lot of times you get signed and then and then you figure out what the sound is going to be and everyone kind of has a say and so with this I think it just speaks to like where I'm at right now in my career because I just got to do it all myself and then essentially what we did is we took this body of work and we kind of like went around to, it. yeah like we went on to different labels and we were like who wants it essentially yeah. like it's done like this is what you get take it or leave it whoever is the most excited about it like I wasn't willing to like budge it was kind of like this is what I made like if you're if you want it you know let's partner together so um that that felt really empowering and really special and epic records ended up you know just reacting really well and it's been great with them and um I just think looking back on that it it just feels really cool to be like oh this is we just made what we wanted to make, and then fuck yeah! Now, now it's coming out. The so creativity and the leverage was with you, hundred percent. Yeah. And by the way, because it will work, everything moving forward, if you choose to stay with Epic, is also with you. Yeah, yeah. It it was a cool way to enter into like a new 
a new season and, and a new partnership. Yeah, I think it set the tone in Smart. a cool way. Everything with Epic obviously is working out, but were you prepared to do this independently if you had to? That's an interesting question. It, it crossed my mind because, like I said, it was like I didn't have a label. I had all this music. Um, yeah, and I think it definitely, yeah, it definitely crossed my mind. I have been an independent artist before, you know, when I was first starting out. So I, I know what that grind is like and have so much respect for indie artists. I think once we started taking those meetings I and I was kind of realizing, okay, my, my vision for this album um, – you know, I, I want to kind of have that label support and uh, partner with people who can, you know, open doors and just make this like as big as we can make it just because these songs feel so big. Mm. So it was more just like, yeah, let's just, you know, let's just like go big on this. And and for, for this specific music, it just kind of felt right once I was actually in those meetings. Tori, That's a good question. Though. Good question, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Tori's waiting for you below. Listen, on Amazon Music, it's all there for you. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I, I remember this. I was like, wait, I had I didn't mention that. No, part it's of it. wild because I forgot that you went from Capital to a whole new label. Mm -hmm. And really, like, there was this, like, moment, like, a season in between the two. Yeah. Where you didn't have anybody. Yeah. But for you, the, honestly, the best. Yeah. It worked out to your benefit. It worked out. Yeah. I'm grateful. How did you know it was officially finished? Um, Once I put High Water and Same Girl on there same girl is like the last like you know pin and just like final little bow on the whole thing um and i think uh and even yeah this album it is like it is finished it does feel finished but i still think there's you know there's room for maybe even more like from this era um john and i are already like we have like the writing bug again we're like let's let's do more songs so really yeah, for sure. We just had so much fun in the studio. But um yeah, I think I think Same Girl was a very obvious like ending for me. Who are you talking to in that song? <laughs> I'm talking to not not one person in particular. It it's a little bit of uh talking to like the industry as a whole, I would say. Um, like the, the music industry, I guess. Um and a little bit of, like, just, you know, people with opinions, I guess. I, or, yeah, just, like, chatter online and kind of things that I saw. Even, even like, little dumb things, like people confused about my me changing my hair color or something. Mm. <laughs> I was like, um, there's a line in the song where I'm like, still, I, like, I'm still the same girl even if I look a little different, you know. But, um yeah, there's there's a lot of like Easter eggs in that song too, like little nods to uh, some lines in my first album, and uh, yeah, I think I think fans will pick up on on a lot of that stuff with that song. It felt like a a little gift to them. Well, yeah, I mean, like she said, there's a lot of Easter eggs. I don't know if I picked up on the ones you're talking about, but you. Yeah. But I was wondering, like, when you were growing up, were labels trying to say like do this or do this? Because you were talking about how Ooh. you don't need to get naked to sell out shows. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that is. A direct Easter egg from um, Unbreakable Smile, my first album, and the song Unbreakable Smile, where I say, um, maybe I could sell out shows without taking off my clothes. And this was 2015, my debut album. And at that time, I was feeling, I was just feeling like, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing everything. And I, I love this music, but something's not clicking. Like, what is it? And I was just feeling this kind of this pressure, I guess, of like, and, and I, actually it was, it goes way before that. I think when I was a kid, you know, I was signed at, at 12 years old and there was, there was definitely, it wasn't just what I was feeling. There was like a pressure, I think, to, to look a certain way, dress a certain way. Um, I think as a, as a female, like in the music industry in you know, mainstream pop music, whatever, there's a certain, um, pressure for sure I think to to look a certain way and maybe maybe be a little more revealing and you know I, I think as a kid being thrown into that and knowing like that's just not who I am um and I knew that from very young I I was so determined I was like there this can't be 
the only element that's missing. Like there's, I should still be able to do what I love and and not do that. And it's not that it's even like I'm not even judging anyone who does choose to dress a certain way. It was more that it's it's more that I wanted to sort of be an example for like the for for myself as a kid. It would have been great to have somebody to look up to and be like, wow, they're doing it and. It's just like another option. Like yeah. you don't have to look oh. like this or dress like this or or even like sing about certain things. Like there, you know, there's another way to do it. So I think when fast forward to 2015, when I was putting out um, that first album, that's where all of that angst came from. It was like, you know, I've been in this industry for 10 years and I'm, it's like finally happening. It was, it was almost like a little bit of like, a, oh, cool. Like I did, I proved to myself that I, I can just remain true to who I am and um people people will hopefully listen seems like they they were rocking with me you know which is cool <laughs> but <laughs> like people like there's other people with the same mindset and so taking it all the way back to uh to same girl now on this album I had another one of those moments where I was like what is not uh, like something is not uh not clicking like what is it and then I, I snapped back into that little girl and I was like oh my gosh like there's still that kind of pressure of like okay now you've been now you've been in this industry but like what else you got wow mm. us shock us like it's all about like shock factor now I feel like um which again like I'm not I, I don't want this to come off as like judgmental at all but I think for me it's more just like oh wait but like can I just still be myself and like do what I'm doing like is that cool too and so that's where that's where a lot of those feelings came from from uh from same girl it was just me kind of saying like I'm still I'm still the same like I'm gonna stay true to who I've always been even if I'm having a little more fun with like sounds and my style and whatever like that the core of who I am is always gonna be the same but also doesn't do you feel validated in the fact that you were able to stick true to yourself and it's worked 100 percent yeah hundred percent. And I, I think I, yeah, I'm so grateful. And when I'm, I think I feel it the most, uh, it's the most tangible for me. Like when I'm on tour, like when I'm doing shows and I, I can actually physically see, you know, these, these people singing like all of my lyrics and, um, yeah, that's, that's just the most validating thing. And you could tell like they're resonating with it and whatever they're going through in their life. Like everyone brings their own story to those shows, so it's yeah, that's that's super validating. I think I think every artist would say that maybe. Well, you <laughs> you are also a great role model. I never thought of that until this oh. very moment. You know, when you're talking about like <laughs> you know, the right pop person to be, and there was no example of that. No, you are, and is that responsibility like strengthened or like intensified by I don't know being an elephant that is seen by <laughs> like dozens of millions of kids all over the world. Uh, yeah, the good old elephant in the room. Um, <laughs> no, she's a big deal. She's a big deal. Yeah, I, I absolutely like pinch myself when I think about when I think about that whole franchise. And I mean, the first movie alone, I was like, this is so crazy. And then when they did the second one, I was like, wait, this is still crazy. Like, this is growing now. And then they've announced they're doing a third. Are you? Returning? I yeah, I I hope so. <laughs> How can they get rid of Mina? She's so, she takes up the whole screen. Um, even if I have no lines, like she's just gonna be there. <laughs> no, but yeah, I I'm very excited about about just being being Mina. I I and to answer your question, I feel like yeah, maybe it did. I don't know. Maybe maybe it did kind of put that in my mind. I think I've even without. That movie, though, yeah, I you think, were a great role model before that movie. I mean, thank you. I, I yeah. don't think I've like tried to be a, no, I a role model. A I guess I think I, there's this theme that I feel like I keep going back to is just that younger self. It's like, who would I have wanted that girl to to be looking up to? Like, is she proud of me? And I think I keep I use that as sort of, um, you know, like my gauge, I guess. But it, yeah, it's it's wild. It's very it's very humbling to to get comments like that where, you know, I guess, yeah, people looking up to me, it's kind of crazy, but, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Any details on Sing 3? Um, I I don't think I'm allowed to say, but, yeah. But you've been in conversation, but I, Yeah, right? I've, been, I've been in combos, yeah. 
Yeah, very sick. excited. Cool. Yeah. What is that surreal. like? How long does it take to finish a movie? It's it's a long time. Like you'll end up going. I went into the studio. It's very sporadic. Like they just kind of call and they're like, "Hey, like when we have you know like this block of um, like of lines or or we have a song, we want you to come in." So it's usually like a song and then we'll do some lines. Uh, but I think on I think on both movies I went in maybe like four times. And it, and then that was it. It's like so it's so quick, and you're. I mean, the sessions are pretty intense. Like you're you're getting through a lot, yeah. but it's it's very spread out. It's like you'll do a session, and then like a few months go by, you'll do another one because they're they're like piecing together things too behind the scenes, yeah, and um, you know animating all of it. But you don't really get to see anything until it's done. Like they have maybe some sketches and stuff, but. Yeah, it's all just, you have to, like, visualize it. And, I mean, the director, that's kind of his job, um, who's who's incredible. He's so fun to work with. Um, but, yeah, it's his, his, he'll just, like, explain what the scene is in a really fun way. And it's, yeah, it's fun. It's like we get to be kids and just have fun the whole time. How cool is that? It is great. Do you, do you remember when the character is first pitched to you? They're like, Tori, we want you to play a singing elephant. <laughs> um, I remember... Yeah, I remember them calling and having me do, I did like a Zoom audition for it. Because all I really knew was it was like a bunch of singing animals. Um, I, I must have known that that my character was an elephant though. But it didn't it didn't stick out to me because I had I had no reference. Like I, it was just the way they pitched it was like, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, you know, a singing competition. But like all animals. But you won't really, you won't really dwell on the fact that they're animals like you'll get so invested that you'll feel like these are like real people <laughs> and um yeah and, and it was all about the music they're like we're gonna have just you know like classic iconic Dude, songs bottoms in it crazy it is crazy i got to meet him too at one of the like press things that we did and i was i was tripping out i was uh -huh. like you're bono and he he had seen something of me but i didn't know like what video he was talking about he was like oh yeah that that one video that you did, and I was like, it felt like such a deep cut. I was like, what? I, I think I vaguely know what you're talking. Dude, about. Dude, he's either a deep cut or he's making it up or talking know, to someone else. <laughs> he like actually that. doesn't know. Who I am. He has no, no idea. but what the things he was saying, I was like, no, I definitely, I'm, I'm tracking with you, but I couldn't. I, I don't know how he. Maybe he got something sent to him. I don't know, but it wasn't like he wasn't referencing like this viral video of mine or anything. It was like not a the very, vine. Not the vibe. Oh, imagine if he brought that up. <laughs> no, but he he was so lovely, so sweet, and uh, yeah, he was very kind. It was cool to meet him. Next time you run into him, let him know that you know Dan Zola. Oh, okay, yeah, I will. They're friends. <laughs> you guys are friends. I mean, I know I know them pretty well. <laughs> pretty well. I love making him uncomfortable. We can edit it out. I just had to do it. I just didn't for know a, that. For a bit. What? <laughs> pretty cool. I think that may be the coolest thing about you. I mean, yeah, it's pretty. It's Wait, like there. you could text him right now. She's like, "Hey, Bono." <laughs> I mean, I could <laughs> <laughs> not directly him, but like, oh, if, if he, wanted, he if, doesn't get in touch. Okay, wow. You looking for a collab? You need a feature? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you yeah, I think, that deal. I think I can, we I'm, should do a collab. I may hook you up with that. Yeah, please. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll All talk right. after. <laughs> He's gonna hook you up with that. He couldn't even get me fucking tickets to the Sphere. Okay. That looked crazy. <laughs> it was great. He's like, it was great. I was there every night. Yeah, went eight times. Yeah, I was backstage. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Yeah. I have a visual was... of you and Bono talking in my head. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for that. It was a good time. That was nice. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, that was really cool. Uh, Tori Kelly, you're great. Uh, Tori is the album, by the way. It's waiting for you. Plus, mm -hmm. all of Tori's discography is on Amazon Music. Listen to it below. What are you thinking? Uh, all right, cool. I got some dumb questions. Mm, love those. Someone in the other room before we started was oh, talking no. about how you sing in sim simish simlish. She did a song for the Sims. Who was talking about that? Someone in the other room. Uh, is man, that, we don't want to talk in about trouble. that. No, Why? I'm just kidding. No, this <laughs> is. Um, you did a song for Sims. 4? Yeah, no, it's it's a highlight for me. Yeah. I was gonna no. say like, what are you running from it? No, no, I I love it. I'm just making fun of whoever oh. brought it up. Her name's Kelsey. I, I, Oh, okay. oh, Kelsey, I thought it was, okay. No, not your team, it's someone from our oh, team. Oh, got it, got it, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was someone from my team. <laughs> like, make sure you talk about the Sims. <laughs> um, no, no but was that, so was, that was, that was highlight, highlight of my career. And you could, there's a clip of it somewhere. It, it went around recently on TikTok. <laughs> and 
I'm just having the time of my life. My hair is like bouncing everywhere. It was so fun. So how do you learn Simish? So they, it's a real language. Like they translate everything and they just kind of type it out. And it's really, I mean, it's easy to read. It's just like weird sounds. Um, I think we did, we did my song, it was off my first album called Expensive. Uh, and then the, <laughs> the first line of the song is, uh, what is the song actually? Now I'm only thinking of the sim version. How do the real <laughs> words go? Let me tell you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let me tell you, baby. And then in the simlish, it's translated to Shabba Navy Nubu. So I guess I think baby is always Nubu, I think. And then yeah, the word yeah is yib. So it's like yib, yib, yib. <laughs> so you start, and I think love, what is love? I think love is like nerb. Right? You, you're nodding like you know. You know, like, yeah, I know, the, I know the language. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I I used to play, but it's been it's been so long. Remember like Rosebud semi semicolon or whatever it was the hack the the code the cheat code to get like a million dollars. You guys don't remember that? No, I remember that, but on like Roller Coaster Tycoon, so oh. different game. Yeah, I remember that one too. That was a good one. Wow, Love that game. nostalgia. Um, that's pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, it was a, it was a, a dream. I've done some weird things, like <laughs> weird. Cool slash cool things. <laughs> it's things like that where I'm like, what is my life? Like, what are we even talking about? <laughs> but it's so awesome. Like, so I just love, I love what I get to do. It's, it's great. You know what else went viral is when you uh, sang the Lorax thing. Oh, yeah. And nobody can do it except, of course, you can. No. There is other people. What is it? I think. It's the, it's the run um, from the movie. I was just getting tagged in it a bunch and I'll just reply to comments sometimes. They're like, do the Lorax run. And for a while I was like, what is that? I don't know what that is. So I had to go, I had to go listen to it, but it's just like a, I don't know who's actually singing it on the, in the movie. We should find that out. It's really good. That do you run. ever surprise yourself when you're singing? You're like, wow, I am, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, you're just so used to it at this point. I, I'm trying to, I feel like, that's a good way to say it. A non conceited way to say it. You can this. say yes. No, I will say something that I love about what I get to do and I I will call it a gift because I don't I don't feel I feel like I've worked hard and I've like, you know, worked on my craft and I take it really seriously, but I do feel like it's it's at the end of the day like a gift from God. Like I didn't choose to be a singer, you know. Um and so I, when I'm alone and just kind of singing and no one's watching, it is really cool. Those are the moments I think where I'm like, oh, this is cool that I, I'm just enjoying this like by myself, like, or just, you know, me and God, like we're just, it's just us. It's just me. And there's no audience. And I think that's like, I, I'll have, I'll have moments every once in a while where I'm, I'm just singing or I'm practicing something or, um, you know, singing a worship song or something like that. And I'm like, wow, this is, it's such a pure love of music because I'm not doing it for anybody else right now. Um, so I think that's very telling when I can kind of have those moments to myself and be like, oh, this is cool. Like, yeah, you sound good. You just hit that note really well. <laughs> like, and I'll, you know, I'll kind of um, just get into it that way. But, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's how I know that I just really love what I do. And that I, I think I'm like meant to be doing it. That's a good answer because sometimes when I'm sense. in the car, I'm like, <laughs> I think I hit that and I probably <laughs> didn't. And you must feel that every uh, time you sing. No, no. I mean, cause the, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm alone, that's also when I'm working out the kinks, you know? So it's like, I'll, I'll be like, Oh girl, like, yeah, you didn't. <laughs> You didn't hit that. Like, <laughs> keep trying. Because um, I'm, I'm such a perfectionist. I, I yeah, I, I work on, I work on that a lot. I, I just always want to keep growing and always be, always being a student, really, of, of my craft. How many takes does it usually take you to get a verse down? Um, it varies. I mean, I think with this album, we, we were so particular on like the sounds and eat every song is almost like its own world. So I would, I would almost like get into character. Um, it was, and when I say character, like it wasn't fully acting. Cause again, it's like, it's less of playing a character and more of like me sort of pulling out this mm. thing that's been sitting there and, uh, and trying to 
match the song. Like a song like Unbelievable, for example, it's like these really cool, like low tones that probably some tones that people haven't heard from me before on a song. Um, Spruce is another one. I'm, it's like opposite. Like I'm singing super high and like soft. And um, so it was fun to sort of like paint, you know, paint throughout these songs and just uh, create like new, I want to say like, I guess there's like new tones and new textures. I think that I was discovering. I was like, Ooh, that sounds cool. Let's see how that sounds. But I didn't answer your question at all. Cause you asked me how long it, it took. That was a, um, that's, that's a good answer. Yeah. I don't really know how long it was always different. But when you have a song like shine on or ocean, yeah. Oceans, oceans. Yeah. Can you turn that rasp on and off or does that just come naturally? I I can it's so funny. In the studio, I I purposely try for it. I'll I'll drink soda sometimes and get a little rasp <laughs> or coffee. Um nice. sometimes it's just there, like if I don't know, it's just there. But ideally, it depends on the day, but ideally I'm able to yeah, decide like okay, I want rasp on this note. Um I think when I'm performing live, like on a tour, there's so many shows back to back that I intentionally make it a little cleaner because mm-hmm. I think if I'm too raspy, it like my voice will just be shot. But um, I'll still I'll let it like poke out on on certain notes just because it's fun. But yeah, in the studio, I think I did the same thing actually for my gospel project. Is very similar process to doing like Ocean the Shine On is a good example too, where I intentionally wanted to go for that rasp, so I was like. Yeah, let me get a soda or like like a coke or a, a coffee or something, and it just it makes it more consistent. <laughs> wow, that's the secret. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's what works for me, I guess. Yeah. One of the best shows I've ever seen in my life was you performing in a church. Really? Yeah. In Where LA. did you come to the LA one? Yeah, it yeah. was so good. That was a fun one. Phenomenal. That tour was really special. It was all it was like all churches or like historic buildings. It was really cool. Sick. Really yeah. special stuff. It was. I. I mean, Thanks. I get flashbacks to it all the time. Thank you. We really gotta get good. you to the to the new. I, I the saw new you at the Troubadour too. too. Oh I, yeah, yeah. I did, but I'll oh, see yeah. you again. That was I'll, fun. I'll come. I, I will be watching yeah, Tori yeah. Kelly on stage until I can watch no longer. <laughs> Didn't you just perform at the Roxy not too long ago? Was that or is that the one that was canceled? I did. No, we ended up we ended up redoing it. That's right. Yeah. I it was, was told there was no tickets left and I couldn't go. Oh. <laughs> okay, you just need to say that. I had to say I'm that. Sorry, That's been weighing on me for a couple say. months now. <laughs> it's good. We'll, we'll get you at the next one. Right, yeah, cool. I'm sorry about that. Now, this is something I actually thought about on the way here, and I thought this is a really good idea, and I had I, to pitch it to you. Mm, oh, you, you, what ever is, think, you ever think about naming a tour the Tory? Okay, it's so funny that you said that because I. <laughs> T O U R I. Because this this would have been the time to do it. I mean, yes. my album's literally called Tori. So I was like, what's the tour gonna be? I'm not even joking. Like that was that was like a like a half serious conversation at one point. <laughs> because well, I was like, I don't know, like like it's just it's just too much. I think I would because my my fans have been calling even before this album, like they've been saying, Oh my gosh, can't wait for Tori. Like they'll spell it like T O U R I. And yeah, it, it just maybe I maybe I missed my moment. Maybe I should have really gone gone with it, but I just I couldn't commit fully. I would just been laughing too much. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a little so it's a little a little too far. <laughs> but it can be like an inside joke, you know, we can we can say it. Yeah, I tried pitching Macklemore once on the Macklator. The Macklator. He, he didn't take it. Yeah, it's mm. a tough one. But you did have some success with Five Seconds of Summer. Oh yeah, Five Sauce what Five. Was it? Five Sauce Five. Yeah. That was their fifth album. Their fifth album. Oh, that was your idea? Because if you spell it, it's five SOS five. So instead of a fifth. And it's their fifth album. Five Sauce Five, yeah. I love that. No, yeah, they, they used it. Yeah. Where's your where's um, your still like, percentage? Still like, waiting for it. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, how that Didn't works. give you a cut? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> the, wow, I'm they, sorry. They just don't have his address, I'm yeah. sure. I just moved. It probably got lost in the box. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they. <laughs> Processing error. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something. Something. <laughs> Uh, you have any thoughts over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course I do. Yeah. Um, He's got his notes. Yeah. So I went digging in the comments section on TikTok, and I found something from December where somebody said, are there any whistles on your album? You said, there's one, but it's kind of hidden. Wow, you really went deep diving. There is. Where? where? Well, it's hidden. Like, do you want I me, mean, am I supposed to say? I feel like people should have to find it. Oh. 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I mean, I can go next question. No, <laughs> um, it's on. It's at the end of Shine On. At the end of Shine On. on there, there's like a note, and it's it's like stacked. I do a couple different octaves in one of them. So That's note. the song where there's like a really cool bridge or something going on there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it's after they that. They all have cool bridges, though. Well, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there's like a big choir moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't that part, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that AI too? No, that's real. That's real oh. human. <laughs> that's so funny. No, so that's me, John, Ten Rock, Clyde, and Jordan. I think. Yeah, I think that's just. I think that's just us. And then we just stacked it a bunch of times. What else are you thinking? I mean, I feel <laughs> yeah. What like else I'm, have we not talked about? I feel like I may have asked this last time, but I think people still ask you what. And and I don't remember the answer. What is the Spice Girls sample that's missing, or where oh can we find it? Yeah. No, we didn't. We did we talk about this last time? I don't know if I had teased it. I don't it. think so. I am getting hit up all the time about this sample. What is it? I don't so, know. So, well, because you're you were looking at comments. That's yeah. how you found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I went on Instagram Live. Like this, this is probably a year ago now. Because yeah, a year ago. Yeah, I, I went on Instagram Live, and I was just like feeling crazy, and I was like, let me just play. Some stuff that I don't even know if it's going to go on the album or not, but I'm just feeling wild. And I never do stuff like that because I'm very like, oh, I don't want them to hear it yet. And on this day, I was like, whatever. I am I just, I had just uh, worked on this song with John and I was like, whatever, let's just play it. I just was just feeling chaotic. So I played it and I was literally, I literally played like five seconds of it. And there's a little um, like Spice Girls they could tell. Like I even cut it off like before it was getting to the whole thing. But the yeah, they're they're on to me with that one. They've been begging. Um so I might have to I might have to put that one out at some point because I didn't realize the response would did be you, like begging me for it. Did you clear the sample? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what that's what they've like caught on to. Also, they're like, wait, maybe it's like a process. And like, yeah, it kind of is. But um, yeah, I'm. I I really I really like the song. I still, th- and another reason too is like we hadn't finished it yet. I just got ahead of myself and was like, "Woo, let's play a little piece of it." It wasn't even done, um, but I also just wasn't expecting them to like be begging for it. So I guess now I have to put it out. What song is it? Do we know? Do we know the sample? Can you say that? Um, I think it was a. Uh, you wanna get with me? You better listen. Yeah, like these these Spice Girl song. Wow. Yeah, so if if you're listening. <laughs> Spice Girls. Well, please, please say yes. The process is pretty laborious. <laughs> like you're going to need all the girls to sign off. You're going to yeah. need the person who produced it, wrote it, every yeah. writer on it, whoever owns the publishing, whoever owns the masters. Should we like start a petition? I mean, like mm-hmm. the conversation starts here. It's called yeah. grassroots. But lucky yeah. for you, I do know their manager. Oh. We know everybody if you haven't figured that one out. <laughs> wow. So I'm getting a Bono feature. I'm getting a Spice Girls sample all here. Yeah, this is weird. great. Yeah, I do happen to know their manager. She's a really good friend. Yeah. Tell her I said what's up. <laughs> Tell her, uh, Tell her we'll, we'll be reaching out. This song's going to cross her desk soon. <laughs> yeah. No, it is It is a fun one. It is a fun sick. one. Yeah. Why am I saying sick so much today? Sick. I haven't noticed. I say sick a lot. I like look for different I ways to dope. express excitement outside of my own smile. Dope, sick, dope, cool, cool awesome, yeah, all, all nice. bad, all bad. Yay! <laughs> Listen to Tori; it's waiting for you. All of her music is on Amazon Music. You got a final thought? I think I've asked enough. We've covered. You, if you have a question, you should ask it, Dan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, with the health scare, is everything good now? Like you're all in the clear? Yeah, yeah, That's I cool. am. I mean, I'm feeling, I'm feeling great. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm just no. I just, just didn't know yeah, if there was like anything answer. that you had to like get checked up on. If it would be from doing certain tours or traveling or yeah. So I I have really great doctors and they have been like checking up on me and stuff. And I'll go in every once in a while. But for the most, but they're just like yeah, you, like everything looks good. So I'm I feel kind of like better than ever actually, which good. is which is exciting. So um, yeah, I'm glad to be on the other side of that now. So happy for you. Thank you. So so happy that you're healthy. Thanks. But also crafting, may I say, the best art you've ever made. Oh, thank Yeah, I've you. had it on repeat since we got the link. It's really? so good. Yeah. Do y'all have a favorite? Oh, I mean, I love I'm High curious. Water. High Water is fave? Yeah. Okay. 
Really good. I, I you, think thing you do, and I think yeah. it also mm. kind of reminds me. This is also another compliment, but I think it reminds me of my beautiful dark twisted fantasy by Kanye West when Ooh. his production's kind of going all over the place. Yeah. But it's like incredible. That's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. What it's I would like the me. outro, especially yeah. with the piano stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think John mentioned that as like a an inspo. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, cool. then he nailed it. Thank you. Yeah, there's another song I was in the car going like this too. <laughs> but I forget what song it is, so it doesn't matter. Is it maybe like Diamonds? Yeah, maybe. China. Maybe. One of those. There's yeah. like, there's definitely some, I feel like some like, well, I said like so many times just now. Uh, I think it was Shine On actually, <laughs> now I mention it. There's a lot of 90s hip hop sprinkled throughout the album, I would say. Yeah. What's that hybrid? What'd you learn from John Billion after making this album? Mm. I love his work ethic and how how much of a perfectionist he is like we both are but in different ways he he got so passionate about just working on this whole album and wanting every song just to be like amazingly great and uh very you know like forward thinking and he just he wanted to like check off all the boxes like I just want this to be amazing and it was really cool having someone championed me like that who was just taking my vision and, and wanting it to um yeah just wanting it to be really good so I think as far as what I learned from him I think I always thought I don't know if I learned this from him but maybe um it just confirmed something for me where I, I always thought that I was a pretty slow songwriter and I really like took my time with everything and sometimes I would get into sessions and they, the writers would be so fast, and I would just be like, well, okay. like, And then we end up with a song by the end of the day, and, which is great. And sometimes that really works. But my natural style is to really take my time and sometimes work on, like, one song for a whole week and just really hack away at it and perfect it. And he is also like that. So go, getting in the studio with him and um, him just already having that natural process, I was like, oh, this just confirms for me that this is... Like, this is what it's supposed to be like for at least this album. You know, it's supposed to, this is like my favorite way of working. Like, we just really took our time with it. And um, I think you can tell, you know, when you hear the songs, they feel really hand, like, handcrafted and pieced together. So. To a line like that with a partner is really special. Yeah, it is. And they chosen this album. It's Thank really you. great. Listen to Tori. It's all on Amazon Music for you. Please listen. Link is below. You good? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tori Kelly. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and love you. Love you too. It's <laughs> always so fun. Tori's waiting for you. Please listen to it. It deserves more than just your ears. It deserves your attention and your time. So try it out. Listen to it on Amazon Music. You good? Yes. Like you said, Tori's waiting for you. Tori is waiting like, for I, you. It's like I am waiting for you in your headphones. I like how the EP was like Tori <laughs> lowercase and the album's Tori capital period. Yeah. That Period. was it. very intentional. <laughs> I had to. I had to go all caps. And mm -hmm. then all caps wasn't good enough. I was like, I need it's I need there to be a period. It's a mm -hmm. statement. It ended there. <laughs> yeah. It ends with this album. But really it leads to something totally new. Hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Listen to Tori. Link Sick. below. Tori Kelly. <laughs> <Sick>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay.